Hello, Milford. Welcome to another edition of Healthy Futures, a show created in partnership with Healthy Futures Initiative of Milford. Today, we're going to talk about immunity health, um, not just during the, the colder months, but uh, during the whole year. And you may be asking yourself, Rob, what do you know about immunity health? And I don't know much. So that's why we have someone else here to talk about it. And here we have uh, Lisa Vassell. And uh, we know she knows a lot because she has a lot of abbreviations after the end of her name. <laughs> so, Lisa, how do we keep ourselves from getting sick in the colder months especially, but uh, also all year round? That's a great question. And I, I disagree with you. I think you know a little bit more than you're leading on. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, first and foremost, I think that we should talk about what we put in our body. And I, I think a lot of people know me to know that uh, I am passionate about quality food. It doesn't have to be expensive food. It doesn't have to be um, organic. It just has to be uh, quality nutrients because without nutrients, our immune system really can't work well. And nutrients being those vitamins, minerals, um, proteins, carbohydrates, those kind of things all work together to give information into the cells that then feed the immune system. And you can feed it kind of not so good food and it won't work as optimally, or you can feed it great food and it will definitely be stronger. Sure. So most people are busy. They have really busy lives, and they're probably going to combat that information with, hey, I don't have time to cook for myself uh, to make sure exact right. I know exactly what's going into my food. Um, or, you know, I'm, I'm in a rush. The only option I have is fast food. What do you say to those people? I think that there's a huge problem with our um, priorities, and, and I to agree with you that there really are truly people that don't have time. Uh, the way that I work when I work with clients is to ask people to make a menu of what they're, or make a list of what they do all week. Where do I eat? How do I eat? How much time do I have? And then break it down to, okay, it's almost always breakfast is a huge issue and dinner is a huge issue. Most people can do something either a cafeteria or, uh, or something else for lunch. But for me, I have them prepare, and that would be things like making ahead of uh, making ahead food. Um, I have a great recipe with egg muffins, where they put you know an, all their kind of favorite spinach or peppers or those kind of things on the stove, stir it up, pour in a little bit of egg, and put it in muffin tins. Cook it, and then they're in the freezer. You can you can cook thirty of them. Keep them in the freezer for on the go. You can make fast smoothies. Put them in um, a bunch of berries, a banana, maybe a handful of spinach, and peel a couple carrots, throw that in a blender with a little ice and maybe some almond milk or even water, and buzz it up. It does takes no time at all and you can take it with you. A lot of people have those Nutribullet things or Magic Bullet things that will really help them to bring it with them. Um, as far as uh, on the go at, at lunchtime, I really am a huge fan of leftover, right? So whatever you make at night, make a little extra so you can bring it during the day. And um, as far as making things at night, use the crock pot. Use things like you only have to do two or three ingredients and it takes 15 or 20 minutes. And there's plenty of websites on the, on the uh, internet to give you ideas for that. Great, another way to help your immunity, build your immunity, would be with some good sleep. And you're gonna hear, again, the busy people saying, I don't have time to sleep. So how do you force yourself to find the time to sleep? Uh, that has to come from, you know, the people that actually come to me that are so sleep deprived are saying to me, I just never even knew how to do it. One of the problems that I see is that, <laughs> or, or I hear is, oh, I'm so tired because I watched XYZ last night. And I really would like people to sit back and think, what in six months will it matter if you watch that television show? That's a good point. <laughs> watch this show, though. <laughs> yeah, except for this show. Um, in six months, will it matter? I mean, truly, will it matter if you watch the game? I mean, I know it's exciting. I know, you know, during those huge seasons, I get that. But it's, you don't have to watch every single solitary game. You don't have to watch every single solitary show. A lot of people have those abilities to tape the shows and watch it at a different time. I also feel like people need to remember that it's not just um, that you're not sleeping, but sleep is imperative to decrease what we call the stress hormone or cortisol, if, some, if other people have heard of that. You need sleep to actually shut that down and we don't shut that down, high cortisone actually increases uh, your work of your immune system. And they've done studies and studies over and over again about for people that um, show that the higher the cortisol, the lower the immune system. Hmm. Not only that, but it also doesn't, when you don't decrease your cortisol levels, it actually increases the sugar that's floating around in your body as well um, because insulin levels might rise. They work together through the pancreas and a whole bunch of other things. But the reason I get into that is because sleep is not just for 
um, resting and feeling better and less tired, but mm -hmm. it's immune system, it's diabetes, it's high blood pressure, it's all these things that actually tie into that as well. Wow, yeah, you're probably really uh, hurting yourself a lot more than you know if you're not getting the proper sleep. Right, and, and if you're someone who can't shut down, then you need to change your sleep habits, they call that sleep um, hygiene, where you have to have, a, a, you know, nine o'clock at night, no technology whatsoever, nothing that's bright, bright in your face because it actually increases the alertness uh, to have any kind of screen on. That would mean that the blueberries, my, my father-in-law calls them that, Blackberry, um, <laughs> yeah. iPhone, those kind of things, all of those things um, would be uh, put away uh, so that you don't have the constant, you know, what else, who was getting to, to, to uh, trying to contact me. Sure, and that's, that's tough for a lot of people. It's really so you, tough. So it starts with the person. They got to make the initiative. Right. And if they're having trouble sleeping, it, you know, they uh, often will go to things like alcohol or, um, the P, uh, Tylenol or those other PM type sleep aids. And, and once in a while I can get those, but they really should talk with somebody about why they're not sleeping and, and try to get uh, a way to get themselves to sleep. Or uh, another good sleep aid that I like, exercise, right? 100%. So if you go out and run or play a sport for you know a couple hours, it's gonna be easier to fall asleep, right? Right, especially if you don't do that right before you go to sleep. Uh, but yes, absolutely. And some people will say, well, I can't get up and exercise because I don't have time. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, what about first thing in the morning if you get up at like 5.30 or 6? I don't, I'm too tired because I can't, I can't fall asleep at night. So it's a big, huge, uh, you know, domino effect. Yeah. People, you know, like you said, you've got to reorganize your priorities. Um, people put a lot of stress on themselves to be at work all the time. But if you get sick, you can't be at work. Right. So you really have to start you know eating better getting that sleep and exercising in order to get that sleep and, and there's a lot of people that will say that there's no time or I don't have money for a gym um, but there's ways uh, that we can do that and I worked together with Leanne Blind who helped show that there were many many ways that you can incorporate this throughout the day um, quickly at home with no money whatsoever that's a good segue. You, you almost did it for me. So <laughs> we brought our cameras to ABT, uh, athletic-based training here in Milford with Leanne Blinn. And uh, let's check out a couple of easy at-home workouts that can help you uh, increase your immunity health. Hi, my name is Leanne Blinn from Athletic-Based Training. I'm here in partnership with Healthy Futures of Greater Milford. Today I'm going to show you some easy exercises that you can do at home with my partner, Lisa. She's going to be my wonderful assistant for today and we're going to go through four easy exercises that you can do. Quick and easy, takes you 10 minutes. 10 minutes you can burn 100 calories, quick and easy calories. All right, first we're going to do jumping jacks. We have a low impact version and we have a high impact version. Low impact version, she's going to start by stepping out to right and left. Arms can go up in the air. If anything, if she wants even lower impact, she can put her hands by her sides at her hips and just use the legs. High impact version, she's gonna add a little jump to it, arms up, feet out, bring your feet together. Always wanna be nice and light on the balls of your feet and make sure she's not landing hard on her heels. Perfect. I'm gonna show you three versions of the push-up. So it's push-up position. There's three versions of it, advanced, little medium, little middle of the road, and then basic version of the push-up. At home, if you find you have a couch or a chair, you can start with your basic version, which is gonna be on the, on the uh, couch or chair. So Lisa is gonna put her hands on the, on the bench, okay? She wants to make sure her shoulders are straight up over her elbows and straight up over her hands. She's gonna step her feet out so her body is in a complete parallel position and making sure she's completely straight. She's gonna bend at her elbows and she's gonna bring her chest down towards the bench. Her elbows are tucked in perfect and she's pushing herself back up just give me two more of those please drop it down and up one more perfect position again body is completely straight across perfect and I'll stand up some of the mistakes you find in this as you will find with the all with all of them is that the elbows bow out or the back sags so things you want to look for that you don't want to do which I will have Lisa demonstrate so you know what you're looking for okay so elbows are going out Okay, this puts a lot of stress on the shoulders here, okay. Back sag would be another one. Tucking underneath, it puts stress on the shoulders, but also puts stress on the lower back. 
So those are two ways, two things you want to look for that you don't want to do when it comes to push-ups. All right. Second version is a little bit is another way to um, to work on your push-up position, which is going to be on the floor and on the knees. Same concept here. Shoulders always want to be over the elbows and over the hands. So she's going to be on her knees. Her back is going to be completely flat and straight. She's going to drop down, and her shoulders are going to drop down straight over her hands. Her elbows bend straight back. And we'll do two more of those. Tucking the elbows. Abs are nice and tight. You always want to engage your core as you push up. Perfect. Relax. Okay. Some of the things that um, people do that I wouldn't say are cheating, but are bad habits to do, are butts in the air. So butt in the air or back really sagging is not good for your back or really not doing the exercise correctly. So I'm going to have Lisa go down. And her hips are going to be high up like this, and then she just drops her chest straight up and down. So and sometimes it gets more extreme than that, where the, just the chest comes down. Okay. She's so perfect, she does it right every time. <laughs> or a short range of motion is also one of them, OK? All right, last version. Arms getting tired yet? <laughs> is a, is a um, regular push-up position. Body, again, is completely straight across. Good ab position. Abs are nice and tight. She's going to drop down where her shoulders drop straight over her hands, and she's going to push straight back up. Just give me one more. Drop down. OK. <laughs> so. Fatigue kind of set in on that one, okay? Just drop on your knees, you're good. So once that starts to happen, so if Lisa's already done six, seven, eight, nine, ten push-ups from there to here, going and when your back starts to sag, that's when you want to nix the exercise and, and stop or go back to a modified version on the knees. Attention superheroes! Evil villains are trying to get kids to drink sugar-sweetened beverages like sports drinks, soda, and juice. Oh no! Let's go, superheroes! <laughs> Soon I have every kid in America full of sugar! <laughs> drink! 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 Welcome back to Healthy Futures. Uh, today we're talking about immunity health with Lisa Vassell. She's from For Better Health Incorporated and uh, she is a holistic health uh, nurse practitioner here in Milford. Uh, she's kind of hitting us up on what we need to do better in our lives to stay healthy, uh, keep ourselves from getting sick. Uh, we just talked about the importance of sleep, eating better, uh, and now we're going to talk about um, getting rid of some stress in our lives. Everyone is really busy these days. Everyone has something to do, somewhere to be, uh, whether you have kids, or whether you have a business. Uh, there's always there's all these excuses to not be healthy. So let's attack that a little bit. How do we keep our priorities straight and keep ourselves healthy and still lead productive lives? Right. That's really, it's a very huge challenge. I think the expectation is if you're not doing a hundred things, you're, bored, you're, you're actually lazy these days. Uh, and that's not just us, but also with the kids. So if you don't have your kids in two different sports, then they're never ever going to get on the next season's team. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really hard to have um, an equal, a good balance for that. But study after study after study has shown that the more stressed out a person is, whether that be emotional stress, financial stress, physical stress, or even illness, um, then, um, but those three at the beginning are, will absolutely tax your immune system. 
And so in order to organize that, it really has to come down to where do you have to actually have to, have to, have to get something done? And again, back to if I don't do this today, what, where will I be? In, will it matter in six months? Mm -hmm. And really making a decision, will this matter if I go to so-and-so's party that you don't really feel like going to or somebody else's, um, you know, baptism or something that you want to go, and I'm not saying no, don't go to those <laughs> things, but certainly everyone um, needs to learn to say no once in a while. Sure. Um, is, there a, is there a committee that you have to be on? Um, and if you're passionate about it and it really makes you happy, then that's going to actually build um, or decrease some stress, right? Whereas if it's so much work that it's doing nothing and it's not benefiting you or your family and it really is taking away from your ability to make a good meal or to sleep, then, then where is that leaving anybody? Uh, it's really truly about organizing and prioritizing. It's tough, you know, we're, we're becoming more social as a society, um, but it's tough to say no when people want you to be at a certain place and it's almost stressful to have to come up with an excuse and sometimes it's not as huge, you're just tired and you, you have done a lot of things that week and you don't want to go to that said event. So, you know, it's tough for most people. So how do you convince these people that it's okay to say no and I need to take some time off and regroup? How do you mm -hmm. convey it's, to someone that, that invites you to something, you know, without hurting their feelings? I right. Guess. So that's a great question. So usually it's, it depends on who it is, you know. So if it's a work event, then, then what would that mean? So if it's a um, friend, then it's, you know, if it's a birthday party, send the birthday party, birthday present, and just say, you know, sorry, I couldn't make it. If it's, um, I had a client that was hugely into uh, fundraising. And she had started, you know, initiated a, a bunch of different fundraisers. And it was her job to go to every single solitary event. She was exhausted. I, I asked her if there's any way that you could just not go, or if you could go for 20 minutes and just make that appearance. Um, it, the other thing that people are afraid of is, um, or stressed out by, is the fact that they have uh, social media, as you said, or we're really more social, but social media is really a, a huge play in this too, where mm -hmm. um, Who's at what party? Yep. Who's at this party? The pictures go up, the, mm -hmm. whether it be Instagram, Facebook, whatever people are using Twitter, that it, I think is actually increasing people's stress. I um, agree. Um, causing them to be either, should I have gone or should I have not gone? Or um, if you do make up the excuse and then you end up somewhere else, <laughs> there's even more <laughs> yes, stress. There's evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's all about um, finding the priority and figuring out what really has to be done and really is more of a joy. If it's a joy, then it's not stressful. But if it isn't, then it really should be about uh, prioritization because all of the things that have to do with your immune system is about priority. Right, and maybe some of that time off that you take from work or the social events, um, if you're going to spend it alone, um, either catch up on sleep or get outside and get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another bullet point we want to touch on. How does fresh air translate and getting outside translate into staying healthy? Well, we know how many, all of us can't even go outside these days with this, the weather being so chilly. And so everything is sort of just circulating. The more you get outside, the more you're able to release and get some fresh air and get some, some good, clean air into your lungs mm -hmm. and into your body. Um, you think about the, what you put, bring in, whether it be by food, by liquid, by breathing, um, and by um, those three ways that the food get in, and actually your skin too. So if you're getting all of that always inside um, and through food that may not be healthy, and yet you go outside and you get something really healthy food, then your cells are going to be made with better foods. Now during the colder months, is it true that, you know, you go out in the cold air and you're breathing cold air, you're automatically getting sick? No. Or, okay. No. So what do you say to those people? Well, I myself don't like cold weather, so I totally... Uh, empathize with the people that don't want to go out in this weather, but just bundle up, bundle up, bundle up, and get outside, even if it's just 10, 15 minutes a day. I tell my kids, run around outside for 10, 15 minutes, come back so that you can at least get some fresh air. If there is a day that's above 40, 50, open all the windows for about you know, 45 minutes and then close them all back down again so you can really circulate the air. Nice. All right. What about supplements? You know, uh, in order for me to stay uh, have a he healthy immune system. I'm just going to take every vitamin on the rack. Uh, I'm going to drink kombucha like crazy, mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, 
uh, take acidophilus, is that going to help you uh, in the long run, or is it just kind of mumbo jumbo? What do you, how do you feel about supplements? I think supplements depend on the person, and I think that you make a good point about going and taking every single one. Not all of us need every single one, and many of us don't even need some of the stuff that, that is on the market. Um, my, my take is that most people are deficient in nutrients because of the way we eat. We've already talked about the fact that we aren't eating high-quality food and the way that food has grown today. Uh, that being said, uh, stress actually decreases the amount of ability for you to digest the and, and get those good absorption of nutrients, as does how much you eat. So the more you eat, the more nutrients you actually have to bring on in order for your body to utilize them. So a lot of us overeat. Um, as far as do I agree with them or not, I think that they would be very helpful in a nice seatbelt depending upon what it is you're putting in. There are some great supplements on the market. You mentioned kombucha, which many people don't know is a drinkable type of a probiotic, um, and as is acidophilus, which is another one you mentioned. I think probiotics are one of the major, major ways for people to get a huge boost of immune system. Um, and the, there's been actually studies, and it was in a daycare, that showed that uh, those kids that had drank milk with probiotics and those kids that did not, there was a, I forget where the study was, I'm sorry, but those that did not um, have the probiotic actually called out 16% more and had a 43% higher rate of illness just by having no probiotic in their milk in these daycare kids. So the other one that's really huge is, is vitamin D. Um, and everybody's sort of hearing about that nowadays, but vitamin D is, I mean, look at where we, where we, where we live. It's very hard to get that mm -hmm. um, more than two months a year here. So we get it naturally through the sun. Correct. Um, but in the sun, you actually need to uh, convert that. So it needs to be on uh, a great deal of skin exposed. It takes about 30 minutes for your skin skin to absorb it and convert it. It's a hormone. Mm -hmm. And so many of us aren't even out there that long because of being afraid of getting burnt or recovered or have right. sunscreen on. So it's very hard. And so um, having your vitamin D checked and you want that level to be up around 40, 50, uh, and most of us sort of run around 20, 30. Mm -hmm. So you can boost that up with uh, vitamin D3 supplementation. A lot of the D on the market is D2, and it's really hard for us to use that. So that's a huge one. And then um, you mentioned just a regular vitamin. I mean, what kind of vitamin can we take and should we take? I'm a huge fan of ones that are not sort of, here, take this pill, and it has 700 things that your body needs because some of us may not need that. Really, what we need is fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so if you can find the one that's made of whole foods, it probably will be absorbed much easier and, um, and, and really go for one that's higher quality. Costco 700 in a bottle usually doesn't have a bunch of ability to absorb. And uh, probiotic, back to probiotics, basically it's bacteria, right? It it's is, good it's a, bacteria. It's a healthy bacteria that our gut And I find needs. it interesting that, you know, at the same time, we need good bacteria in our bodies to keep us healthy, but we're also sterilizing our hands on the outside. So is that, is the, you know, using the hand sanitizer a uh, good idea to stay uh, healthy, or how do you feel about that? No, because I think what that's doing, there's actually recent studies that have come out that have shown that that's really not decreasing much as far as uh, our exposure and our um, in immune lack, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, But what it is doing is increasing our um, exposure to superbugs. Uh, because we're killing off the ones that are protecting us on the skin ah. and yet we're not uh, doing the other. So you need good, healthy bacteria in your gut, um, but your skin is, is the biggest organ in your body and, and if you have breakdown, um, then, then you want to just use a lot of lotion because that's what you're protecting your body from. But no, just soap and water. I, I don't think that there's much need for any of those um, antibacterials. If you're in a, in a crunch, absolutely. Uh, I think depending upon where you work, there may be a higher need. But everyday use, I don't think that it's a great, I think hand, soap and water is the best way. Very good. All right, well, that does it for this episode of Healthy Futures. Hopefully we can all stay uh, healthy and not get sick. Uh, this uh, flu season and in the coming months. Uh, I want to thank Lisa for coming on today, and we'll see you next month.